Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric here. I want to talk to you today about multi-combo arc fault breakers. Um, also tying to the fact that why you get a basement permit. Um, biggest reason why you get basement permits is because, let's say you go to sell a year later or 20 or 40 years later, um, they're going to stop right there where that code resided with most jurisdictions. Um, so my suggestion on this is to definitely get a permit when you're doing it. We like to make sure all that wiring's inspected so that way you're not going to get additional issues with arc faults. Um, uh, we got called out to this house right here. We'll just do a quick shot. This is the basement living. This is the bathroom. That's just a little closet. <clears throat> kind of a kitchenette, like more like a dry bar. And then this right here, the living room. And that's just an empty storage. Um, so the complaint was is that when they went to sell, uh, everything was fine with the normal CH breakers, but when they put in the arc faults, it would trip, 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 trip. So when you have a multi-type breaker coming down, you're going to have a red and a black. And that's going to be 250 volts between those. And you say, well, wait, wait a minute. Why isn't that 120? Yeah, it is 120 on your lighting and your plugs, but that means it's 250. And um, this neutral here is sharing. If you don't understand that, um, <clears throat> don't call me. I am not a teacher for those that are do-it-yourself. Um, and also, just don't mess around with that. Just call somebody that knows what they're doing. This took us about <clears throat> five hours to diagnose. There was multiple issues going on. Um, the biggest thing is this was circuit 38 and 40, and uh, the customer was just trying to put in two single-pole CH breakers without it being multi-shared neutral. You can't do that. Anytime you turn on and plug into the outlet, it'll trip, and the other one is for the lights, it'll trip. So it'll trip back and forth between plugging in or using the light switch. So that's why you have to use a multi-type breaker. Those are pretty pricey. I'll show you another video on that. The other issue we're having is whether we came down the stairs and turned on this switch for these lights here, it tripped. Went around this corner, turned on this light switch here, it tripped. But yet the hots were on the same, ex uh, the ungrounded conductor or the hots on both sides were the same circuit, but they weren't fed back to back. In fact, one went to the old lighting system in the storage area, and this one right here was fed over to that switch right there. Um, the issue was, this is very odd, and I've never seen this before, um, but it was kind of non-coincidental that we went and hit this and this tripped, but if we left 33 alone, 38 would come over and push 38, it tripped. Well, we also had another issue going on where the grounds and neutrals were touching here in the plug on that plug and that plug. So just from tapping on the wall to hit the dimmer switch, the round knob, probably caused that to trip. Didn't have anything to do with the neutrals tied together on circuit 38, 40, and 33. But we did find a circuit sitting here, which was not a circuit, it was just all the way back to the panel. And we saw a blue cap and we're like, why is that about? Well, I toned it out, my Pro 3000. Once I figured out where that went, and how you tone it is important. Sometimes you can't tone with the neutral because that's the problem. But once I toned it out and figured out that that was in the panel, what was happening is 33 was coming down and jumping over to there. 33 was also coming from that same box and going around to the stairs. Because the original wiring was that we had this red cap, which just because you open a box, don't assume that you see a red and that is automatically a three-way switch. No, this is a dead-end three-way. This never gave me an issue. Dead-end meaning these four wires have nothing to do with this basement. This red could be a switched outlet, could be a track light, could be switching back loop to the lights and storage, which it was. So they cut that off, shoved it in. Then I came over here and realized in this box that the original circuit goes to that area of the panel because all the home runs go to that corner. So then I realized that this red is dead up here too, which they moved the switch to this direction here and gave me a switch loop. If you do a switch loop, by the way, make sure you use your, your white grounded conductor and relabel it with a Sharpie that that's your hot and your switch legs are black, okay? If you're doing a two wire. Now the red comes here and so they moved it over to here, but what was going on is that circuit 33 was feeding to here home run and branching here and going there, but then the neutral backfed for this room here on another neutral to the panel. So this black was sitting capped in the panel, that neutral was tied to the bar. If that neutral wasn't even tied to the bar and they both were capped, I would have never had an issue. 
but then I wouldn't have had a, a, a neutral. I would not have had one to go up to here to this light because they didn't pull me a three wire with a black, red, and a white to that box. So we could have cut drywall, we could have came up the back, whatever. But what we did is we traced it out and realized that was going on. And now this right here is on its own circuit, 34. We're creating one. Because we had a home run sitting in that box doing nothing. That was a little tricky to find. But the back feed on it was tripping literally this whole room and all of this lighting in here. So the other thing is here's another multi-circuit coming in, our black and our red. And that's 39 and 41, which is a multi-tie. Okay? So when you go into a box, again, do not assume that the red is automatically switched. You might get nailed with 250 volts in this case. I'll do a second video in the panel.